Um, our next speaker will be Dr. Klaus Lay. Uh, he uh, is going to be um, talking to us on translating an atherosclerosis vaccine to clinical trials. Um, his, he is the professor and head of the Division of Inflammation Biology at La Jolla Institute for Allergy and Immunology. Most of his work has centered on um, the inflammatory component of atherosclerosis and is actively working on an anti-inflammatory heart vaccine aimed at dialing down inflammation in effective arteries. This is something that many, many people would look forward to uh, your being successful at, and that's what he's going to focus on this, this uh, morning. He comes to us from Germany, uh, where he did his medical studies and um, postdoctoral research. Um, he visited uh, in San Diego um, during that period um, and then came back to the U.S. at the University of Virginia, where he served as director of the Robert M. Byrne Cardiovascular Research Center from 2001 to 2007 um, and then joined the group at La Jolla. He is distinguished, as have been our other speakers, in terms of honors and awards, including most recently winning the Eugene M. Landis Award which is the Microcirculatory Society's top honor in recognition of his pioneering work in vascular biology and microcirculation. So please proceed. Well, thank you for your kind introduction and thank you for inviting me here. This is very exciting to be at a real vaccine meeting. And I couldn't agree more uh, with Wayne and uh, Mark and others. In order to do this, we need to understand immunology and especially human immunology much better. So my lab is a vascular biology lab, um, and we do a lot of imaging, and I just wanted to show you a, a handful of uh, pretty movies, um, because uh, one part of the immune system that we haven't heard about today is uh, the innate uh, immune system, and that's very important in many diseases, and let me just speak for atherosclerosis. So this is a cleared whole mount of a carotid artery in which Different macrophages were li labeled by different uh, types of GFP and YFP, and uh, there are four subsets of macrophages, and nobody has a clue what they do. We can also do in vivo imaging, which is technically challenging because uh, the mouse has a heartbeat of 300 to 400, and this is a live mouse carotid artery, and you can see these subsets of macrophages doing their thing. But um, the workflow um, in my lab is digesting either mouse or human atherosclerotic plaques, then do standard flow cytometry uh, and CYTOF, uh, which is mass cytometry, uh, where you get better resolution with about 40 markers. And then we do, in the beginning, when we have no idea what we're looking for, we do drop seq, where you get single cell RNA seq uh, for uh, all the cells in the digest. But once we know which cells we want, from either the flow cytometry or the cytof, we can sort for these cells and uh, sequence them and get much, much deeper transcriptomes, analyze this uh, by various tools that, that are basically all machine learning based. So uh, this is not an atherosclerosis crowd, so I have to introduce the residual in inflammatory risk. And in atherosclerosis, we have lipid risk and inflammatory risk. And basically, we can say that uh, in, the, in the age of uh, PCSK9 antibodies, that the lipid risk can be taken care of. If your LDL is not controlled by statins, it can be controlled by PCSK9, but your risk is still about half, even if you control to target. And that is true whether you control with statin or whether you control with PCSK9. In other words, there is not more to be had by controlling lipid risk. But uh, earlier this year, the CANTOS trial uh, came out and showed that uh, you can also do something about the inflammatory risk because when you block interleukin-1 beta, and this is a large clinical trial, you get um, an improved hazard ratio, and uh, this is uh, significant. However, you also get a higher fatal infection rate because, of course, if you mess with a major cytokine like IL-1 beta, this is not good for host defense. So the rationale for immunotherapy is that, yes, IL-1 blockade works, but it broadly impairs host defense, so overall mortality has actually not changed much uh, in spite of significantly reducing major adverse cardiovascular events. But immunotherapy is narrowly antigen-specific and therefore spares host defense. I don't have to tell you about CD4 T-cell subsets. This um, is um, an immunology crowd, 
But in atherosclerosis, mostly the T regs are atheroprotective. That has the best evidence. TR1s, uh, the AL10 producers, may be atheroprotective. And TH1s and TH17s are bad. And there are not many TH2s in the plaque. So, um, okay. Can you? Yeah. This movie is not working, but simply shows uh, MHC class two restriction. So when we first started this, we had to show that in atherosclerosis, we actually had class two restricted CD4 T cell responses. And this was initially done um, with uh, OT2 or smarter transgenic uh, T, T cell receptor cells that were incubated with an aorta from an atherosclerotic mouse in which the APCs were labeled with a, a GFP. And then you get movies like this where the blue and the red cells are T cells and the green cells are the antigen presenting cells, and then you can study how well they interact with each other, and you can get numbers. And so you see two things. You see that when you have antigen present, you get long interactions, and the T cell velocity goes down, and you can also count the number of cells that interact. In a positive case, that can be 15%. And here are the specificity controls. So when you add the OBA peptide, the OT2 cells will uh, react and smarter peptide. The smarter T cells will react. This is simply showing that this is class two restricted, and when you block class two, you don't get any interaction. At that time, 2012, nobody believed that there were CD4 T cell responses in atherosclerosis that were class two restricted. Um, this movie doesn't seem to work because uh, the Apple computer doesn't have this codec, but uh, this is the same thing in atherosclerotic mouse. The movie would look similar. And um, when I saw this data uh, in 2011 or 12, I almost fell out of my chair because this is now a polyclonal response. This is not a transgenic. This is a T cells harvested from an ApoE knockout mouse incubated with an ApoE knockout, which is a standard model of atherosclerosis. And the number of interacting cells is the same almost as in the transgenic model. So this works extremely well, much better than I would have thought. So I'll summarize this work. We know the antigen presentation is by some sort of macrophage that is CD11C positive to CD4 T cells. It's class two restricted, peptide specific, and triggers various cytokines. Now, one of the known atherosclerosis antigens is ApoB, and ApoB is the core protein in LDL, but also in chylomicrons. And, and it winds its way around and through the various lipids, the phospholipid monolayer and the cholesterol and the cholesterol esters. And so we, te we wanted to immunize with class two restricted ApoB peptides. And to do that, we first used a computer-based uh, prediction of epitope similar to, to the last talk. We used the NN algorithm for class two binding, measured the affinity of candidate peptides, and then the good ones we, we tested uh, in, in mice. We used the ApoE knockout model. And the, the vaccination scheme we use is uh, basically one prime and four boosts right now. And that clearly needs to be optimized. This is not translatable yet. Uh, so I will summarize all these data in one slide because they're all published. So we tested so far six of the 27 epitopes that we found. And six out of six worked. In all cases, you get 40 to 50% reduction in lesions. Um, I will come back to uh, P18, uh, which is a special peptide uh, for which we have some human data. And uh, the controls were negative, so adjuvant only or peptide only or irrelevant peptide like MOG or Ovalimin had no, no protective effect. And recently we, we screened some adjuvants uh, because uh, CFA, IFA is not translatable and we, we screened about eight adjuvants and it turns out that Adavax actually works. Uh, so Adavax is similar to MF59, which is clinically used. And uh, you see the lesion size in the aortic arch um, here in, uh, on the left and in the whole aorta uh, on the right. And maybe the images are, are more, uh, more impressive. But what was very interesting, unlike CFA, IFA, the Adavax did not induce antibodies. There was no IgG1, no IgG2C. These are the two types that you measure in black six mice. Whereas, so the same protection was afforded with CFA, IFA, and with Adavax, but Adavax did not induce antibodies. And I've for a long time believed that this, this vaccine is mostly a CD4 T cell vaccine, not an antibody-based vaccine. So this kind of gives uh, additional support to this hypothesis. In order to see uh, the class two uh, restricted uh, CD4 T cells, 
we made MHC class two tetramers for the mouse was made by Mark Jenkins and Bill Kwok made the human tetramers. Basically, uh, I think you all know what tetramers are. This is an analogy crowd. And so, so this is uh, uh, the, the P18 peptide. And you can see here uh, that um, when you immunize with uh, P18, in this case in CFA, IFA, you get a, an expansion and you get like 0.05% of, of your CD4 T cells to be uh, specific. So this is, of course, more than the natural repertoire, but these, these numbers are starting, uh, starting to make sense. And of these, many, many, 50% are CD25 positive FOXP3 positive Tregs. We think the induced Tregs are what are athroprotective. Some evidence for that. So um, next, uh, we took a look by single-cell RNA-seq, and as, as you know, single-cell RNA-seq, as elegant as it is, the transcriptomes are not very deep. You get about 1,200 genes per cell, and so we did uh, this uh, uh, Tisney clustering, and um, I'll just highlight the ones that have transcript for FOXP3. So these are clusters one through six. They had FOXP3 in them, and when you look at the transcriptome, you see very interesting things. So, so these have the FOXP3, but they also have, some have um, uh, raw, raw alpha, raw gamma, some have ICOS, uh, TBX21 is, is TBED, so you get a, a mixed phenotype. These are not uh, your normal garden variety T-Rex, and we're working on this to figure, out, to figure out what exactly they are. So what do these cells do? Well, if you do an adoptive transfer, you sort these by tetramer and put them in a recipient mouse. They go to the order, so that's good. This is an atherosclerotic recipient, so they can go there, and you can show this by imaging. So here, the control cells are green, and you, could, the, you can see that the antigen-specific T cells in red go in to where the antigen-presenting cells in blue are. And are they good or bad? So, so this was a system in which we went into CD4 knockout uh, with uh, 60,000 uh, antigen-specific regulatory T cells from a FOXP3 uh, GFP mouse sorted again by tetramer. So this explains why we have so few cells. And when you give these cells, you see uh, a, d a, a decrease in the on-fast lesion size with these APOB-specific T-Rex and also root lesion size. I'm not showing pictures, but there's another lesion near, near the aortic valves that, that you can analyze. So what do we learn from the mouse so far in terms of mechanism? CD4 T cells interact uh, with APCs in the aortic wall. This interaction is epitope specific and class two restricted. Immunotherapy, either by vaccination or cell-based with class two restricted ApoB peptides is atheroprotective and transferred to Treg home to the order and they're also atheroprotective. So is this just a mouse phenomenon? So let's look at patients. So in patients, of course, like in all of us, we have a very diverse array of class two molecules, DRB, D, uh, DP, and DQ, and these are the 30 epitopes that, that we have found in human ApoB. And you can see that some alleles bind many of the peptides and some peptides bind many of the alleles. So there's hope that there might be a universal vaccine possible. Here I'm coming back to this peptide 18, which is unique because it's the only peptide that is sequence identical between mouse and human and also binds both IFB, the mouse class two, and also binds two alleles of human class two. We got the human 0701 tetramer to work so that we could interrogate people using this tetramer to this endogenous ApoB epitope. So um, this, the, the samples come from the women's interagency HIV study. Uh, subclinical atherosclerosis was shown by carotid ultrasound, actually here at USC, uh, HODIS did, did that work, and frozen PBMCs from over 100 participants. We had them M MHC typed, and we had found some that were addressable by our 701P18 tetramer. And they were tested for surface intercellular markers. So this is what the ultrasound looks like, and it's basically a lesion count. So this is the carotid artery wall, and here you have a lesion, so we had this for all the participants. And uh, we have this, the human tetramer, as I said, it's 701. Um, and so we can um, now see how many cells we have. We actually use the tetramer always in two colors, an APC and PE. So that reduces the noise, only the double positives are counted. And so you can see, uh, here's a signal to noise. So there is uh, specificity 
In humans, by the way, the number of cells is much higher than in mice is because humans are not naive. They've already seen antigen. Uh, so the numbers are roughly, uh, they are above 0.1% uh, of all CD4 T cells. So what changes most in the patients, and that came somewhat of a surprise, not so much in numbers, but the flavor. In healthy people, um, most of these, two-thirds of these are FOXP3 positive Tregs, and some have FOXP3 and some other transcription factors. But in the cases, you see the FOXP3 part of the pie is much smaller, and many acquire raw gamma T and also Tbet and some other combinations. And this is highly significant. So this raw gamma T positive FOXP3 double positive cell is really only seen in the people with cardiovascular disease and not, not in the healthies. So the second study, uh, we assessed uh, the uh, cardiovascular disease by coronary angiography. Um, we did PBMCs, and then uh, we, we incubated. We did a re-stimulation assay with the ApoB peptides and did flow cytometry. And what we saw, uh, a few things. One, in healthy samples, we saw about 1% of CD4 T cells makes IL-10 by intracellular staining spontaneously. And this is much lower in the cases uh, and not responsive to the peptides. But maybe more excitingly, when you look at CD, CD40 ligands, so that's CD154, this, is only, this comes only up when you re-stimulate cases, so people with atherosclerosis and not in controls. And here are some other cytokines, IL-17, a very large number. 1.5% uh, of all CD4 T cells when re-stimulated with the ApoB peptide pool um, make IL-17, and a smaller number, about 0.3%, make TNF. So what do we know about humans so far? Of course, I have no vaccination data yet. From the WIHS study, we know that most ApoB-specific CD4 T cells in healthy uh, or also in HIV-positive women are Treg. In the Freiburg study, which is the uh, coronary angiography study, we see that 1% of CD4 T cells from healthy subjects, but not from CAD patients, make IL-10, and this is not boosted by the ApoB peptides, it's just spontaneous. In, uh, again, in the WIHS study, we see that many ApoB-specific CD4 T cells in women with atherosclerosis now express raw gamma T, some also Tbet, a few GATA3, and a few postdocs in my lab work on this, what we call the SWITCH project, figuring out how, how this works mechanistically. And in the Freiburg study, we see that 0.3 to 1.5% of CD4 T cells from subjects with CAD, but not from healthy controls, make TNF IL-17 and CD40 ligand when re-stimulated with the ApoB peptide pool. So I would uh, like to map out how uh, we can progress. Uh, we have, uh, I've shown you data in mice, in transgenic mice. We have done transcriptomes, we've done uh, fax cytof TCR sequencing, which I didn't have time to show, single cell RNA-seq. We have humanized mice in which we have the human ApoB, which is useful. We have an adjuvant that might be translatable and we're working more on this. We have reagents, um, and we have the human peptides. Um, uh, we have uh, patients at high risk for cardiovascular disease. You can do patient exomes. You can find people that have eightfold elevated over general population. What we don't have, we don't have primate, primate data yet, and of course, we don't have clinical data yet. And I would like to close by thanking the people who did the work, Dennis Wolf, a cardiologist, who did uh, the second uh, clinical study, and Holger Winkels, who did the single-cell RNA-seq, and Alex Sette, uh, who is a PI at uh, La Jolla Institute, who helped me uh, uh, define the epitopes. Mark Jenkins and Bill Kwok, who made the tetramers, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you, and we may have to give you an additional award for ending early, so thank you. Um, are there questions? Yes. Some were uh, uh, making IL-17 and FOXP3 and RR gamma, um, and then others 
were, had dropped the plot command, and they became more conventional looking uh, through 17 stuff. So, so there's something there in terms of, well, that maybe we're thinking about being <laughs> regulatory females, or? Yeah, th thank you for that question, Mark. So. Um, all the data I showed you in this pie charts, these are all single cell data. So when, when, when it was orange, it means the same cell had the FOXP3 and the raw gamma T, just like you observed. These cells were discovered in 2008 in gastrointestinal biology. And uh, you know uh, these people at that time called them, I guess, TH17, T-Rex or something. They were thought to be T-Rex that are specialized to, to uh, regulate Th17 responses. Similarly, there's a Th1 Treg, which is also seen in the patients. So that's Tbet positive and, and uh, FOXP3 positive. It is not known uh, how this works. So there are a couple, I mean, the simplest hypothesis is that there's clonal expansion of a minor population that in the disease now becomes the major population. And, and that can be addressed by TCR sequencing. But there are other interesting hypotheses that are also possible, and we're working on, on <coughs> trying to find out uh, how, how the, the switch works. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? I, I am curious, perhaps you said, and I missed it, but why did you choose HIV-positive women as oh. a subset to study? Well, uh, you're an MD, so you understand where the samples come from sometimes dictates what you do. We had the HIV interagency study. They wanted to find out why people living with HIV have higher cardiovascular risk, and we basically sequenced all their monocyte subsets and did that work. Well, and we had these samples uh, in, in the freezer, and, and we, we typed them, and there were enough 701s in there, so we just, and they were, they were phenotyped for atherosclerosis, so, so they were, you know, a target of convenience. But the second study, the Freiburg study, is uh, men and women and not non-HIV, so basically confirming, uh, confirming that. Interesting. Well, thank you so much. Important work.